Okay, let's look at the poem uh, Easy Passage by Julia Copus. Uh, like poems like Effects, um, this one stanza kind of accumulation of detail has the effect on the reader that there's this, um, you know, this, this, this memory is overflowing. There's so many ideas and images coming to the speaker. And it is a moment in the past that seemed to have taken on a real uh, significance. And what's happened is this girl is sneaking back into her home and, and she's trying to reach into a window to get into her house without being noticed. And this moment has taken on a real signification for her. It's, ta it's really, it's very important. Um, uh, and and, and what, what our job is to, is to unpick what, what actually is the meaning behind this. What does language reveal about the emotional state of the speaker? Um, and one thing immediately we can say, coming back to what I was trying to talk about in terms of the stanza, it's one long stanza um, with lines that are in jamming and, and that accumulation of detail gives us that feeling of how scared she is and how the memory is coming to her. Once she's halfway up there, crouched in her bikini on the porch roof of her family's house, I mean, we get the setting right away. We get what she's wearing. Um, this will link to uh, details later. Crouched, hidden, in a vulnerable position. She's trembling. She's crouched. She's trembling. She's scared. The verbs show us. She's trying to hide something. She knows that the one thing she must not do is to think of the narrow windowsill. And that's impossible. If you think about the negative, the thing you must not do is, well, for sure you're going to start doing that. So it focuses you on the danger, the worry. She's trembling. The sharp drop of the stairwell. The sharp drop of the stairwell. So there is, there is true danger here. She must keep her mind on the friend with whom she is half in love and who is waiting for her on the blonde gravel somewhere beneath her. Oh, that's so nice. I think for me, it's half in love. It's informal. I mean, I've had students who think, oh, okay, well, here's some sort of, this is the impetus for everything. This is a love affair or something. I think it's, it's when you're a young person and you reflect back on your friendships, you feel, you feel as if you're in love. And that's why we get the half there. So she's in half in love. And then this strange adjective, blonde, to describe the gravel. And she's waiting for her. With her on the blonde hair or something. We're going to the blonde gravel. So it really suggests a contrast here of, you know, outside we have her friend who she's in love with, blonde, this beautiful soft gravel. Inside we have terror, fear, the fear of falling. Keep her in mind, keep her mind on her and on the fact of the open window. So this is what, this is what the speaker needs to focus on. There is an open window and her trust faith and love in her friend. And again, we get that contrast. Here again, we come back to the flimsy, hole-punched aluminum lever towards which, in a moment, she will reach with the length of her whole body. There again, we get this horrible, like, almost easily broken, uh, uh, object that contrasts with the beauty, I think again now of leisure center, and the length of her whole body, leaning in the warm flank of the house. So we get another further contrast. So actually it's not the, ha inside the house is the flank. The, the, like it's, uh, actually I'm just gonna look up flank. I'm gonna pause this for a second. Flank means to the side, the warm side of the house. 
we get this, um, we have, so we have the, the setting, this trembling moment in between. Downstairs, we have the blonde friend, we're, uh, the, sorry, the blonde gravel, the friend we're half in love with, and inside is the warm flank, the safety. I think that suggests safety of the house. But first, she steadies herself, still crouching, the grains of the asphalt hot beneath her toes and fingertips. So what, what I really like about these long lines, these long sentences that continue is they give us that, that sense of unsteadiness that the, per, that the, that the character is going to fall down and, 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 and then and we get the sensory detail of the, of the warmth, the hot asphalt beneath her toes and fingertips, a square of petrified beach. What a wonderful phrase, a square petrified beach. So that's, that's petrified means stoned. Um, uh, is, is, is it because the beach is falling from her toes, uh, connecting to the bikini early on? Um, does the word petrified also suggest her own fear? Now, coming back to her bikini and the beach, we get this, these strange sexual details. Not necessarily sexual, but physical details that suggest potential sexuality. Her tiny breasts rest lightly on her thighs. I think the adjective tiny here is emphasizing her, her age, her childlike sta status, but also, I, I think it reflects the speaker's age difference. When would you speak of a child's... Uh, uh, you, you shouldn't even be speaking... I, I wouldn't even imagine this would be something to remark on, but for the fact that she is in a bikini. And the elder version of herself is reminding that younger version. So we have her, her tiny breasts rest lightly on her thighs. It's very delicate, light images. And then this pause... It's a full stop, but there's still a de dash. There's a, there's a break. And I think we see that break already in these details. But here comes the elderly speaker. What can she know of the way the world admits us less and less the more we grow? This line sticks out. It it's totally doesn't fit in with what we've seen up until this point. It's not a sensory detail. It's a comment. And, and she's almost watching herself. This memory is almost being played like a movie in front of her. And what she's saying is, that girl, what can she possibly know? The world admits us less and less the more we grow. See, you're struggling to get in this little window. But as you grow older and older, you get bigger and bigger. And this becomes a metaphor. You're going to get in less and less. And there's a real sense of regret, resentment, and looking at this moment with that, you know, to my, Helen Dunmore's To My Nine-Year-Old Self is the perfect comparison, I would argue, with this poem. For now, both girls, not for now, so, and now, that, that, that aside, almost, that commentary is put away, because for now, both girls seem lit as if from we, within their hair and the gold stud earrings in the first one's ears. That verb lit from within, their hair, the gold stud. I mean, these, these bright images really emphasize how wonderful these girls are. Um, for now, for now. So forget about the future where I'm cynical and don't understand. It's this moment that matters, this energy, this excitement. For now, the house exists only for them set back as if from the long gray eye of the street. Now watch as the camera pans out. So this, just, this moment is so exciting, so important. It's just this moment. It's like when you're a kid and you're doing something naughty or you're doing something for the first time. All of our emotions are heightened. And we pull back. It's the gray eye of the street, the boring observations of other people. And far away from the mother, who does not trust her daughter with a key. And here we get that detail. Why, why sneak in? Tense relationship. She wants to do other things and her mom doesn't want to let her. 
the worker, now we're pulling out the workers about their business and the drab electroplating factory over the road, far too, most far, from the flush-faced secretary who, with her head full of the evening class she plans to take, I mean, now we're so, we, we're so panned out, camera pans out, we're getting really boring details of people, the factory, the evening classes, or the trip of a lifetime, looks up now from the stirring omens of the astrology column at the girl. So this woman, she's a secretary, she thinks about her evening class, her, her dream trip, her astrology column, these boring, mundane moments. And then she looks at the girl, 13 if she's a day. I'm looking at this girl. If she's, if she's even a day year old, that means she's 13. So like, at most, she's 13. It's a little girl trying to be bigger in her bikini, sneaking out. And again, her tiny breasts, her thighs. She thinks, perhaps, she's more of a sexual being than she is. And this, this, you know, as we pan out, we can see the secretary almost caught up in her own world and then watching this girl. Is the speaker the secretary? I don't think so. But the speaker, who's remembering this moment, and the secretary both have this observation moment. And they're in the witness of the glory, power, energy, fear, trembling of this young 13-year-old girl sneaking into her house. Standing in next to nothing in the driveway opposite. Again, what she's wearing is important. The bikini, the suggestion of sexuality. One hand flat against her stomach. One, can you see that? Let me just make that a little bit more. Oh, yeah. One. Here, I'm going to just pull us in to the ending here just a little bit. Focus up. One, shielding her eyes to gaze up at a pale calf, a single silver anklet, and the five neat shimmering oyster painted toenails of an outstretched foot which catch the sunlight briefly like the flash of armaments before dropping gracefully into the shade of the house. That is absolutely magnificent. Beautiful collection of details. Light and freedom of freedom, conclusion, release of tension. So let's go through that. You get that, this eye, the, you know, um, the one shielded, so the one on the, the, the girl on the ground is, is covering her eyes to gaze up at the pale cap, the silver anklet. She's looking at her silver anklet and this beautiful image of those, no, those toes, shimmering oyster is the color she used to paint her toes. That's fantastic. That's the name of these, um, these colors and of an outstretched foot which catches the sunlight briefly like the fresh ornaments before dropping gracefully into the shade of the house. So we get light, reflection, shade. We get the movement, we get that, the shimmering, the shimmering, the silver, all those suggestions. And what, what, what is brought up here? Okay, yes, we get an ending that is safety, but isn't the safety that this poem's about? It, it, it may have been an easy passage to break it back into her house, but what is this poem actually about? It's about this moment of tension and how it's made the girl feel and how this was a really important moment in her life where she felt like she was becoming sexually aware, that she had tensions with her mother, that she was very cl had a very close friendship, and it had a real relevance to the speaker. Um, and it's in contrast with the boredom of factory workers and a secretary's life caught in dreams. This is a poem that pays rereading, pays reading below the surface to really see the layers um, of, of, of emotion for the speaker.